Okay, I am here to do uh, the Attitude Error episode 4. This is WWF Unforgiven in Your House 98. Um, this is obviously the first pay per view after WrestleMania, so definitely a lot of stuff building up from after WrestleMania. Obviously, you had Kane and Undertaker going to have another match. Then, obviously, you had some Austin then basically starting the feud with Mr. McMahon. This feud was just basically starting. Obviously, you had the first ever match between Stoke Cold and McMahon on Raw and Dude Love came out and interfered basically so that was obviously Austin Dude Love's little bit of a rivalry to build up coming into Unforgiven uh, you had DX and the Legion of Doom obviously you had the new DX obviously with Shawn Michaels obviously not coming back obviously because of the back injury so obviously the night after it then X-Pac and the New Age Outlaws joined DX which I think is very good I've always liked the New Age Outlaws X-Pac I must say is very underrated I thought, I thought he could have easily been a bigger champion but obviously WWF didn't have basically couldn't give rats very ass about but sure it's only one of those things we can dream about um, I've only just come back from watching an epic bit of a important day in the soccer calendar United winning today to go top of the table uh, Manchester United if you're not into soccer whatever so it's a bit of a big day for me so I'm a bit excited so top of the table for the first time since Christmas so but that's for another day Um, let's get back to this review Um, overall this event wasn't pretty good it was okay there was two matches that kind of really saved us from being a horrible show obviously the last two matches were pretty good but not Nothing to get excited over. I thought the Infer Inferno match was okay. It was good. It was good, but not great. It was better than the match at WrestleMania. I'll give you. The, I'll give it that. Um, but there was other matches on here that were really poor. That Evening Gale match was just a heap of shit. Um, obviously you had the the NWA tag match that I just couldn't give two shits about. Really, to be honest, I don't really care about those two. Uh, but yeah. So we'll get on with this. This was in the. Greensboro Coliseum in Greensboro, North Carolina. So, we we'll begin with the first match, which was a six-man tag between The Nation versus Ken Shamrock, Steve Blackman, and Farouk. It was an okay opener. I didn't again. This pay-per-view wasn't great. This is probably the worst since I, I've, I've started doing these pay-per-views. Like No Way Out in Texas was okay. It was good, but not great. But this is definitely by far the worst. It's kind of hard to watch, really, to be honest. But um, started off Dilo beginning the match with a nice snap, snap snooplex on Steve Blackman for two. But then a reversal allowed Blackman to take control of the match. Soon things heated up between X, obviously the X member Farouk was tagging basically about him and Dilo talking smack. Dilo gives him a punch, but then a nice um, spine buster gets two. Uh, the Rock complains to referees as, as obviously. Obviously, Farouk taking off his belt and then Rock moaning over there. But um, the nation then varied between the slow and heavy style of Mark Henry. Mark Henry came in then. Never a big fan of Mark Henry, to be honest. The Rock then came in. Dominated for a bit. Then Ra the Rock then basically came in and done the people's elbow. And the match turned after Br Dilo Brown missed a moonsault. Allowing for Steve Atten to get a hot tag in on Farouk. Taking down the new The Rock. And then it, Henry interfered, and all of them just came into the ring, and then basically a big brawl outside the ring, and then to after reversing a DDT, uh, the Rock went for a DDT. Farouk uh, reversed that into a Dominator and got the victory. So I'll give it two stars. It wasn't great, but I think this match could have been a hell of a lot better. Like if this match was like really good and give, and if it got three and a half, it might have been a different show, but. Overall, two star match. Next match then was for the WWF European title between Triple H and Owen Hart. This match, oh, this match was terrible. I thought it was, like, it wasn't terrible. It was the worst match these two have had probably on pay per view against each other. I give it two stars. It wasn't bad, but it was well worse than their match at WrestleMania. Before the match, China was uh, lifted in on a cage up in the air. Obviously preventing her from interfering in the match. Triple H obviously wasn't happy. And Commissioner Slaughter came, kind of came to see if she was going to be put in there. She He stayed around. Uh, Owen Hart really dominated this match, really, to be honest. Obviously because Triple H was missing China. And basically, they kind of, a lot of the matches were fought up by the stage area. A lot of this match. There's a few of the matches now were kind of up around the stage area. Um... 
trying obviously trying her best to get out trying to bend the bars eventually she she gets out and then she's kind of hanging from the the cage kind of but she's like nearly 15 feet in the air and then obviously then that gets lowered down like i think it was road dog obviously got control of the controls for the cage and china came down distracted the referee triple h then was it triple h forget now what happened triple h i think low yeah hits him with the fire extinguisher to get the win and steals yet another win um, I think Triple H went for the yeah Xbox came in fire extinguisher Triple H gets the win and obviously this is Owen Hart's last chance so overall it was a decent match Owen Hart didn't do too bad again it wasn't a great match it was definitely the war not like the match at Wrestlemania I'll give it two stars so next match then was for the NWA tag team titles between um was it the Midnight Express and the Rock and Roll Express? Yeah, this match was terrible. I'll give it a star. I'm, I'm probably overrating the match. Like it was there, it was on. It was a bonus match. That should tell you a lot. Um, not really. I didn't really like this match whatsoever. I don't get the Rock and I just, don't, I just did not like this match one bit. The new this new version of the Midnight Express are terrible. Like hardcore Holly or Bob Holly, he was called back then. He, he's fucking useless. He was absolutely bad. And same with that bar gun. I couldn't care less. The Rock and Roll Express, fair enough, they're older now. Like They're not going to be great. And um, th They won the match. Uh, the Midnight Express won the match by Bob giving, I think it was it, Gibson the Bulldog after him getting trying to get the pinfall. But sure, that was about it, basically. There was nothing anything entertaining, really, in this match. I'll give it a star, and that's about fucking it. This match was terrible. And then from terrible to extremely terrible was the evening gale match between Sable and Luna. I'm giving this a quarter star. I'm being generous. Like, yeah, something new for the crowd to see, but, like, it was crap. It was only on, like, for, like, four minutes. Like, I'd rather see a proper... This would probably would have been a decent wrestling match. It definitely would have gotten at least a star and a half. But, sure, Luna basically won the whole... And then Mark Merrow obviously didn't come out because he was against all this crap. Uh, Luna won by ripping off all the clothes first, and then Sable kind of attacks her after the match and basically undresses her, leaving Goldust basically Goldust putting his robe over Luna to kind of protect her, so and all that. But nothing really entertaining came from this match, to be honest. I'm going to give it a quarter star. Uh, next match then was for the WWF tag team titles between the New Age Outlaws and LOD 2000 and Sunny at ringside. Again, this match was okay. It, I wasn't expecting too much from this match. Uh, I'll give it two and three quarters. Actually, you know what? I'll give it two and a half because I thought it wasn't a bad match, to be honest. It wasn't a bad match. Probably, actually, ironically, probably the best out of the first five matches, would you believe? Probably the best match. Like, if the event stopped, that would be the best match. Simple as that. Uh, New Age came, came out with Dean Smith, uh, basically a blow up doll. Um, basically. Nothing too much here happened. Um, the weird funny thing about this match is when, kind of the end of the match when Hawk, or was a Hawk, yeah, kind of suplex Road Dog for the win. But both both men's shoulders were down. But the referee looked at Hawks and that got the win for the New Age Outlaws. Basically, didn't like the obviously the LOD didn't like that one bit and basically just kicked the shit out of the referee, gave him the Doomsday Device, all that basically and. Just, it was definitely very controversial to be honest frequent tags a lot in this match um, and obviously the, the new age outlaws worked on um, animals need throughout this whole match which was kind of good kind of glad to see that they got to keep the tag team titles because obviously LOD they're not the great they're not they wouldn't have been great because obviously they're getting older now they have to give it to somebody that's new but they obviously thought they were going to be tag team champions but the referee gave it to the new age outlaws so overall it was a good match now there's some good stuff in it now to be good I'll give it two and a half next match then was the Inferno match between Undertaker and Kane a good match now for the first ever kind of fire type match not a big fan of the matches but still it was good I'll give it three and a half stars Um, kind of basically Kane dominated most of the match again but not as much as he did at Wrestlemania Um, you see the flame every time I think it was a Kane chokeslam Taker or something and and then hit him with a chair. The flames came up. It was like the first ever time I've ever seen an Inferno match. The first time I've seen an Inferno match too was Kane and Triple H. Like it's very scary. I have to give credit to both men. Kind of like 
you don't know what fire is so unpredictable so you have to give credit to both men um, but Kane did Kane kind of fought Undertaker to the mat trying to push his face underneath the ropes obviously to the flames but Undertaker kind of hit him in his bad eye with his thumb and then Paul Bearer trying to chair in and as I said and bang and the flames just come up over the ropes and um, almost set himself on fire Kane, uh, Undertaker by sidestepping uh, leaping flying clothesline and then just short after Kane replied by going to the top rope by but the ropes were shaking underneath him and kind of to the superplex as to Undertaker then kind of Kane was on attack I think Undertaker punched him Kane falls out, out onto the outside obviously without the fire kind of he's going backstage and then Vader returns beats the hell out of Kane brings him towards the ring and Undertaker does his patented uh, suicide dive which was absolutely brilliant perfectly timed and before he even before he hits it, when he hits the ring, just the fire just comes back up again. It was absolutely brilliant. Undertaker then, Paul Bear come kind of comes towards him, tries to hit him with chair, but then Undertaker just beats the head off of him and makes Paul Bear up, but puts him, busts him wide open. Then Undertaker walks back down to the ring. He delivers a big boot force and Kane to fall backwards onto the ring, and the flames making his right arm catch a blaze, and obviously Kane ran ran then from the arena. So. That's how it ended. Decent end, I'll give it three and a half. Probably the most you probably could give this match. It was pretty innovative. Definitely better than the match at WrestleMania, I think. Definitely was more action. But um these that I was, as I said the last two matches saved this pay per view, so next match is the main event for the WWF Championship, Stone Cold vs. Dude Love. Another uh, this was interesting. I'll I'm gonna give it three and a half. I thought it was okay. Um wasn't the best match they've had, but still it was good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, really, I thought the match was okay. Dude, love obviously, I wouldn't. He wouldn't be my first choice to put in the match, but for the WWF title, but um, kind of not many t t anything great to kind of talk about. Basically, the the best parts were coming towards the end of the match, when obviously McMahon came down, but um, not anything great. Um, McMahon comes down, kind of tries to get Austin to get up. Austin goes to the stunner a good few times. I mean, dude, Love gets the um, manimal claw, but obviously Austin fights back. Love tried to close line and caught the referee instead. He really knocks out. Austin then tries for a stunner. Walks a manimal claw. Yeah, I've said that. When Love tried to reapply the hold on a recover on Austin, he's back tossed outside to the ring, followed by Austin, who grabs chair and then accidentally hits McMahon right into the head. Jesus, what a, sl what a chair shot. McMahon was out cold. And obviously, the refer obviously the match is disqualified. He gets disqualified, and Mc Dude Love wins by disqualification. I don't get that to be honest. Don't really care. But I'll give it three and a half stars. It wasn't a bad match. Like there were definitely some good in this match. But as I said, the last two matches really saved this card. It was <laughs> dragged to watch. The last two matches kind of said uh, it got me into it then. But sure. Overall, the worst pay per view so far of my episodes of 1998 and the Attitude Era. Overall, I'm going to give it a 6.75. The most you could give it is about 6.75. I'm sorry. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I've seen some people rating it. The last match is a 4 star. No way. No way in hell. The most you could give it is a 3.5. The worst you could give it is at least a 2. Because like, some people are 2.5, but I thought it was good enough to get a 3.5 star match. But, um, yeah. So, 6.75. My next one obviously will be over the edge and I'm going to watch obviously more Raw episodes I'm trying to get to watch more Raw some of them are not on YouTube so I'm going to have to try and find more ways to watch some of the episodes so so this was the Viper 245 and I will talk to you soon goodbye